Hi everyone, I'm Joe Brady and we're here today to take a look at preparing some files for black and white printing. Now I don't just mean inkjet, I'll come right back to that in a second. We're going to use Lightroom and then in a second video we're going to use Photoshop to explore some ways to convert your color images into black and white for printing. Now I'm going to take you through using, I'm going to use one of my images, I'm going to take you through the process in Lightroom. We'll do it a couple of different ways and I already know that the results are great because I have it right here. This is the print I got back from Digital Silver Imaging of this image, and it is just outstanding. So I can't wait to frame it. This is going in the house after I show it to a couple more people. So let's take a look on how to do this first in Lightroom. So here we are in Lightroom, and it is time to prepare one of our images for sending off for black and white printing. And the first thing we need to do is edit the image. Now there's a couple different ways we can do it. So let's start and see what we can do natively in Lightroom to prepare a black and white file for printing. Now this image is just raw out of the camera and it has some issues. I mean, it's, it's well exposed. You can see from the histogram up here that the whites are almost to the edge. Let's see, do we have any pure black? There is some pure black, but it's under the rock, so it really doesn't matter. So let's do our basic adjustments first because this is very a very important step. Even though we're dealing with a color image here, when we do our black and white conversion, we want to have things looking as good as they can, including, and it might surprise you, including color and saturation. So I'm going to go ahead and treat this as if I'm going to print it in color. All right, that's looking a lot better. In fact, we hit the backsplash key, or the back, yeah, backslash key. You can see from these series of adjustments that I just made that we're already in pretty good shape considering we started there. Now, oh, I do see a couple of spots. You see that spot up in there? So let's use the spot removal tool, which is this one right here. And I'm also going to visualize the spots. You see this button down on the bottom here. It says visualize spots. And when you have a spot on your sensor, it shows up as a perfect circle. So let's zoom in to one to two. And we'll kind of scroll around here. And I want to get rid of these spots. And I just want to make the point that I'm selecting with just slightly larger than the spot itself. So as we move around, here's another one. And if you're not sure, by the way, Hit the A key and you can toggle on and off to see if it actually is a spot that will hide it. Oh, this is a one little bright dot here. I'm going to suspect that that's a speck of some sort. It seems to be. So we'll get rid of that as well. And again, I'll come up into the navigator up here to just drag around and look around to see if there are any more of those circles. Up oh, there's a there's a pretty obvious one right here. So let's make our selection area a little bit bigger again, just big enough to cover that. And again, we hit the A key, which is the visualize spot shortcut. And you can see, yes, there it is. There's that spot. So let's go ahead and get rid of that one. And I think, I think we got them all. Oh, what's this right here? Is that a spot? I'm not sure. We'll toggle it off. Hmm. It's so diffuse. It might be so... Why risk the chance? If it might be a spot, let's get rid of it. And A one more time. Is that a spot? No, it seems to be cloud. I think we're good now. All right, so let's hit done. All right, so we've got rid of our spots. Our image is in pretty good shape to convert to black and white. Decide at this point if there are any other adjustments you want to make. Two things like clarity. In fact, let's add a little dehaze maybe to uh, add a little bit of more structure to the clouds. And I think that the left side of the image is a little bit darker than the right. And that's okay, because it really was. But I want to even it out a little bit more. So I'm going to get a graduated filter here. And I'm just going to drag all the way across. And by the way, if I click on Show Selected Mask Overlay, it shows you how the graduated filter fades from 100% to 50% to zero. So let's hit O to toggle that off. Let's bring the exposure up just a little bit to even that out. Yeah, that looks a lot better. In fact, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to hit O again to show the overlay. I'm going to increase the effect right here. So I'm going to add a brush. I'm going to turn Auto Mask off. And I'm just going to add into this area. And then hit O to toggle that off. And then hit OK. I think we've got a good color image now. And again, that quickly we went from there 
to there. That's why it's important to do your color editing in Lightroom too and really understand how it works. So now we have an image we can convert to black and white. I'm going to do it two different ways. The first way we're going to do it natively in Lightroom itself. So before I do that, I'm going to make a virtual copy of this. So I have my original and that is, well, you can go, let me show you where it is on the menu. So if you come up to photo, you'll see an option, create virtual copy on a Mac. It is command apostrophe. So we have our virtual copy and now I'm going to come back up to the basic panel and simply click on black and white and let's see what happens. All right, so there is a raw, straight black and white file. By itself, it's not terrible. You could use this, but let's see if we can add a little bit more to it. In fact, I'm gonna leave this as well. I'm gonna make another virtual copy. And then I'm gonna come down to the black and white panel here. And this is why having the color image underneath is important because the black and white mix is going to be changed by adjusting the colors. Now you can't see the colors here, obviously, but this little button here can, this targeted adjustment tool. So if I come up and I want the sky to be darker, I click in here, if I click and drag down, it will darken everything that is that color, in this, in this case, obviously blue, underneath. And you can see the blue slider coming down. So that's making for a nice deep blue sky, which is the kind of effect that you would get if you had, say, a red or an orange uh, filter on your camera when you were shooting black and white film. All right, I do like that. Let's bring up the greens a little bit. In fact, I can just cut to the chase, bring up the green slider and the yellow a little bit. And that's not terrible either. Uh, in fact, if we look at the straight black and white conversion, which is fine, but I think having the darker sky is much more dramatic. I'm also going to lighten up the shadows in the middle a little bit. So let's get a brush. And I'm going to turn on auto mask now because I just want it to affect these trees. I don't want it to hit the sky. So I'm going to come down the bottom here, turn on the overlay. And let's go ahead and select that. Good. We got just got some trees there. This one's okay. We'll get this here as well, just to lighten that stuff up a little bit. I'll hit O again for the overlay to toggle that off. And let's increase the exposure just of that. In fact, I'm going to bring the highlights down. It's mostly the shadows I want to open up. All right. And I think pretty quickly, I think we're in good shape with what we could do with this as a uh, Lightroom, just a Lightroom conversion. So we started here and did a straight black and white conversion without doing anything, ended up there. And then we added some more drama to it by using the black and white control panel to bring this down. All right, so I think we have our image ready to go. Um, and again, you can make your own adjustments here a little bit. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more interest. I'm going to send some light from these rocks here and send it up to here, which will kind of lead you into this kind of edge. So I'm going to get myself another brush. I want auto mask off this time. I just want it to go wherever I paint. I'm going to hit O for my overlay down here. And I'm just going to create a path that kind of leads you there. In fact, I'm going to do it from the entire middle. It's going to create a subliminal path that's going to lead you out to that point. So I'll hit O to toggle that off. And let's bring up the shadows a little bit there and the overall exposure. And I think that is looking even better. Yeah, I like that a lot. So again, we've gone from here with our color image, which by the way is certainly a valid image to print, and over here to our black and white, which is looking very dramatic. Love it. So let's prepare this file. In fact, let's e it's prepared already. Let's export this file so that we can send it to the lab. So we go to File, Export, and let's check our settings. Now, I had already created a folder called 4DSI that I put on my desktop. So there it is right there. So we'll choose that. Uh, I could rename it. Maybe uh, I'll put my name on it. Certainly not Cape Cod. I'll just put my name on it so that uh, it's just a reference and this happens to be a place called String Lake in Grand Teton. I want a TIFF and I do want Adobe RGB. Even though we're a black and white file, we want an Adobe RGB file. No compression and we want the 16 bits. No resizing other than we're going to set the resolution at 300. 
Output sharpening off, metadata, you can leave it all in there, that's fine. No watermarking, no post-processing. Simply click on export, and now we're going to have a file just ready and waiting to be printed. So as this file is exporting, let's go ahead and go back to the original file, our original color edit. And what we're going to do is we're going to prepare this file a different way. We're going to send this out to a third-party software called Nick Silver Effects, which really takes a lot of the uh, processing in hand that you don't have to think about what you're doing. And to do that, we go up to Photo, Edit In, Silver Effects Pro. And we're going to edit with our adjustments. Click on Edit. And it's going to take us out of Lightroom into the Nick software. All right, here's our image opened up in Silver Effects. Let's go to full screen so we can see everything that's going on. There we go. So there's Silver Effects in full screen. Now, the default is set up right here with this line that shows me left and right. So I'm just going to push it over to the left right now. And we see a standard uh, black and white conversion happening here, just a neutral one, which is the same as this kind of uh, preset up here. And if we want, we can take a look through the other presets to see. I'm expecting, let's see what high structure looks like. Maybe a little too much. It's also high structure smooth. Oh, that's kind of nice. Let's see what else we have for the, this. Push process, let's see about that. I like that as well. And that's why these thumbnails can be pretty, pretty helpful. There's one called Wet Rocks I'm gonna look at right here which is very dramatic. In that case, that actually might be a little bit much. So I'm going to go to push pro back to push process. I think I like that one the best. So let's do, and we have different levels of push process. That's too much. I think about right there. I like that. And now we have these, a globe, they have all the adjustments we can make in the upper right hand panel here. And we've got global ones, so for brightness. So if I want to open up the shadows a little bit, I can do that. And I can bring down the highlights to flatten this a little bit. Structure is similar to what we're used to in Lightroom, that, uh, like clarity. You can also choose to protect certain tones. So if I want to protect the highlights completely from the original, although they're really, really not being affected at the moment. I think globally that's pretty good. And if we grab this line, we can see, as my screen catches up, left and right, what it is that we've done to the image. And it's really added a nice bit of pop to the sky. And it's not quite as dark as when we had done the transfer over in, uh, in Lightroom directly, although we can change that later. So let's go down to the next one, which is where all the fun happens, and that's the selective adjustments. And you get these control points. So I'm going to get a point. And I'm going to click right up in here. And if you open this, you can see there's more to amplify whites, amplify blacks, etc. I think most of the time you're probably going to be happy with just these three. And I'm going to add a bunch of structure just to these clouds in here. And let's see what that does. In fact, uh, add a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of brightness to the clouds. And I think I like that. And if you like what you've done to the clouds in one place, you can simply hold down the Alt or Option key. Click and drag, and that will make a copy, and you'll see the effect take place. And it's going to vary because it's, it's operating exactly underneath this point. That's what it is affecting. And you'll see if I come into the blue versus the clouds, I get a different result. I do like that. Now, I do think I like the sky a little darker as well. So let's go ahead to control points again. And I'm going to come up into the blue here, and I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit. Maybe even a little more up there. I like that. And then conversely, I'm going to come down to these deep shadows on this point, and I'm going to brighten those up. So now let's drag our before after slider here and see, wow, look what it has done for the clouds. They look great. In fact, boy, I don't nearly know if I need anything else for this image. This image is looking really good and just screaming to go out to print. But while we're here, let's take a look at a couple of the, of the other options. So I'm gonna close these top two windows so we have some more screen real estate. Real estate. And I had mentioned uh, you have the same options of effects as if you were shooting black and white film. So if I wanna see what an orange filter would look like over top of this, 
I simply click on orange and it gets really crazy dark. I can bring the strength of it down to just a little bit. So there's zero, maybe just a little bit is kind of nice. Actually, I do kind of like that. And you can go through, you can see red, which is extreme, yellow, which is a little less green, which is pretty much like neutral and blue, which since you put a blue filter over blue sky, the blue, go, the white, uh, blue sky rather goes practically white. I'm going to go back to my orange and just do a couple of points just to add a little bit more contrast to it. And yeah, that's all we need to do for that. Underneath here we have film types and there's all kinds of different films. If you were ever a film shooter, oh, let's say for example, I wanted to see Fuji Neopan. Okay, lovely, but we've already made our edits here, so I'm not going to simulate a film. You can, at your leisure, go through these, and you can see what all these settings do. However, what I do like, oops, close that by mistake, what I do like is adding grain. And grain per pixel over here, I personally favor about th between 370 and four and a quarter. And that's because I used to shoot film. And having grain the way SilverFX does it is better than anyone else's. Like, let's come up in here. Let's kind of pick a spot to the image. And it just creates such a beautiful film-like grain. Uh, unlike when you do it in Lightroom, it's kind of just evenly placed everywhere. And what I like about this software is that the grain really looks like it did on film. Now, if you decide you want less grain, actually what you do is you make it smaller. Come up a little higher, and the higher the number, the finer the grain you get. Wonderful. Now, there's more we can do in the software, but I think we're good for here. Oh, lastly, finishing adjustments. Now, in light and uh, SilverFX has these toning settings. However, do not use any of them. Although they might look nice, they might give you a kind of a look or a coloring or a tone that you like. Since we are sending a black and white file to, so, to uh, digital silver imaging, well, it's going to be ignored. This is a black and white process. So any toning is going to be stripped out of the file. So don't bother doing it here. The service is offered. If you would like your image toned, you can have that done. Just don't do it in either Lightroom or in Silver Effects because it's going to be ignored. There are vignettes here. As you can see, you go through these. Personally, I like this. This is one of the things I like better in Lightroom. But again, play with it. See if you like. Also, burn edges. So if you want the edges all burnt down. Similar to a vignette, except it's a little more rectangular. And then lastly, there are image borders here, which are not named particularly helpfully. But as you go through, you can see what they do. And again, you can play with those if that's something that you like. I'm going to keep this image clean. So one last time, let's see our before and after slider. And you can see that from our straight black and white conversion to our silver effects version, that's what we've ended up with. And that looks absolutely outstanding. So let's go ahead and save this and it will bring it right back into Lightroom next to the original. All right, and here's our silver effects image brought in from silver effects after we sent it in sent it from Lightroom. All right, so let's go take a look at the sequence of everything we've done. Here's our original raw file out of the camera. Here's our color edit adjustments. Then we made a Lightroom black and white straight conversion with no changes. Then we made adjustments in Lightroom using the use saturation luminance black and white sliders to bring down that sky. And then finally our image after run through Nick Silver effects, quite dramatic. So everything has been exported except for this one. Let's go ahead and export this file. And I'm going to call this one SFX for silver effects, just so I can distinguish them. Yes, it's still a TIFF, Adobe RGB, 300 DPI, and nothing else. Back into the same folder for the files being sent out to digital silver imaging. And now I have to choose between these two, which one I like better. I have this one and I have that one. And I really guess I have to say that the silver effects one wins for me in this one. But again, you might find certain images are going to work just fine doing your conversions in Lightroom. I hope you had some fun with that video. I hope you learned something. I hope you can put it to use. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.